We're here from Etched Actuarial, and in today's video, we are talking about the awesome things that Excel can do. If you have watched any of my other videos, I've released two other Excel videos so far in this four part series, you know that actuaries need to know how to use Excel. So this video is going to show you some of the awesome things that Excel can do. And these are things that I used in Excel all the time in my actuarial work. So I know these are going to be beneficial. If you haven't already, make sure you go download my Excel functions PDF. It is going to tell you all the things you need to know as an aspiring actuary in terms of Excel. It gives you tons of functions and formulas you need to know, plus all these little functionalities that Excel has. They are in there too, just so you are aware of what you need to know in Excel once you start to work in an actuarial position. It's really important that you have these technical skills before you even start applying for actuarial jobs because employers want candidates that know how to use Excel. Okay, so if you haven't already, make sure you watch the last two videos that I've already released and then come back and watch this one. We're going into some of the cool things Excel can do. Okay, the first thing that we're going to look into is something that you'll often use when you have lots and lots of data like I have here. So it can be really helpful if you just want to look at information that meets a certain quality. Let's say we only want to look at people that have a car. So we don't really care right now about all these people with trucks and vans. We just want to look at the information associated with people that have cars. Well, there's a functionality we can use. It's called filtering. If we just just highlight this whole row here we can go to the home tab and then go to filter and we can set a filter and this will allow us to select which type of data we want to see so for example if we click this one now we can take off the check mark for truck and van and just leave car and then if we select ok then it will only leave us with people that have a car as their vehicle another thing you can do with this is let's say we color this, 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 and this in orange. Well, we can use the filter functionality to filter by color, and then we select orange, and it will only show us the rows for people that are colored with orange in this column. That's called filtering. Now to get rid of this, I would just go to the filter functionality again, and click filter and it will completely remove those filters. Next, let's talk about conditional formatting. So I'm going to get rid of all this color that I added in there and we're going to go to this conditional formatting button right here. If we go here and select new rule, we're going to be able to create a new rule. Usually I like to use this one right here that says use a formula to determine which cells to format. And conditional formatting, it will format a cell a certain way that you specify if a certain thing is true. So for example, let's say equals B2, so we're referencing cell B2 right now. If that equals car, like that, and right now it does equal car, we'll have this as our true or false statement. If this is true, then it's going to color a cell or format a cell a certain way. Let's quickly decide how we want it to format that cell. So we can select our format settings here. We can, let's select a color. Maybe we want it to be purple. And let's make a bold font. So we'll bold the font. So if this statement here is true, then this is what the cell is going to look like. If I press OK here, we are saying that if this is equal to car, then it's going to color this cell purple. Now, if we change this to truck, then it takes away the purple formatting. But again, if we change it back to car, then it comes back. Now, what this is typically used for is something like an error statement. So sometimes you'll put a formula in that shows error or something along those lines, and you want it to show up red if it says error. So let's say, for example, we put error, the word error, in this cell. Now we can use our conditional formatting to create a new rule for that cell. And then we go to this, and we say equals cell I3 equals air. So if that's true, let's make our cell red because that usually indicates that there's a problem. So we'll click OK 
and then OK. So now this cell is showing error, so we're going to have it red. But if it shows anything else, if it just says OK, because there's not any problem, then the cell isn't red anymore. And this can be really good for creating checks in your work because you can set up a formula in here that says, okay if everything looks okay or error if everything does not look okay so we'll use the if statements that i showed you in a video or two ago this is the third of a four part series so i've created some other videos and i talk about the if statements so we do equals if let's say sum of these two values is greater than 500 then it's going to show okay Otherwise, it's going to say error. OK, so in this situation, the sum of these two cells is higher than 500, so everything looks OK. But let's say we drop this to 0. And then all of a sudden, the values here add up to only 443. And that's not higher than 500. So our formula here is giving the result error. And because this cell says error, our conditional formatting is formatting it in the way that we told it. So that's how you use conditional formatting. Now let's get rid of all the rules here. And I'm going to get rid of this formula too, just by pressing the delete key. Next, let's look into cell validation. So this is a way that you can have a cell only be able to accept certain values. So it can often be good for creating a drop down box. So let's say we want this cell to only have the option to be car, truck or van. If we click on the cell, then we can go to the data tab and then go to data validation. And we'll click this data validation button. Now it's going to ask us what kind of values we want to allow. Right now it's allowing us to put any value in there, but we want to actually only allow certain values to be in there. So I'm going to select list because I'm going to list the values that I want to allow in this cell. So I'm going to put car and we'll separate them by a comma and then I'll put van comma truck just like that. And also notice that this box here is checked off because I wanted to provide a drop down box for the different options that can be accepted in this cell. So then I'll press OK. Now you're going to see that there's a drop down box. We can click this arrow and it's going to give us the options that we can select in this cell. Now I've accidentally put quotation marks when I guess you don't have to. So I'm going to go fix that right now. See, we can fix this by just removing those quotation marks. Just like that. And now we should only see the proper values here that can be selected. That's how you use cell validation. Cell freezing can also be a really valuable thing to use in your workbooks. Now, if we were to just look down and scroll down to the bottom of this data, you'll see that we can no longer see the top. We don't know what each of these columns is associated with. We don't know what the title of each column is. So in some sense, that can be uh, kind of frustrating. And it's something that usually is somewhat annoying, I guess you could say, when you are trying to work with lots and lots of data. So you often want to have these stay at the top of your screen, even when you scroll down. So that is done by freezing rows or columns. So in this case, I want to freeze the top row. So if I just go to the view tab, then go to freeze panes, and then I can click this button that says freeze top row. And if I do that, it's going to freeze this whole top row. So if I scroll down, you'll see that that stays at the top of my screen, even when I'm at the bottom of the data. And this can be really, really beneficial and it's something I highly recommend you use. You can also do things like freezing the first column or if you, for some reason, wanted to freeze the top three rows for some reason, then I would just put my, or I would just select the cell below that, one of the cells below that row, and then I would select freeze panes and click freeze panes right here. And then it would automatically just keep those top three rows there and I could scroll down. Now I'm going to remove that. 
Now let's talk about pivot tables. These are something that I kind of liked using at some times. Other times they could be kind of difficult to figure out how to arrange the data in a way that I wanted it to be arranged, but pivot tables can be useful. So if we go to insert and then pivot table, we are able to organize our data in ways so that we can easily summarize it. So we'll put here the table that we want to summarize. So we just do that by selecting this table. And then right here, we're going to tell it where we want it to put our pivot table. In this example, it's perfectly fine if it puts it starting in this cell right here. So I'll just press OK. Now, what we want to do, for example, we might want to count how many people are driving vans, how many people are driving cars, and how many people are driving trucks. So we could put car type into the rows section right here. And now you see, you see that it has figured out the only three options that are available. And then we can put the same value here into the values section. And it's automatically going to count how many people are car drivers, how many people are truck drivers and van drivers, and then it gives us a total. So this is a really quick way to get those counts. We may also, for some reason, want to sum up the premiums that are paid by people that are driving each of these vehicle types. So if we wanted, we could drag this down here and it would automatically sum up the first year premium, so column D, for each of these car types or vehicle types. This is how you use a pivot table, but it can be difficult to figure out which of these you need to put into which of these sections. So I would just use different formulas like I showed you in last week's video, the if sum formula or the if average or count if. Those can be really useful if you don't want to use a pivot table for this type of data collection. Okay, I hope that video helped you. We went through things like filtering, conditional formatting, cell validation, cell freezing or row freezing, and pivot tables. These are all things that are going to be really, really beneficial in your actuarial work. So I highly recommend that you take the time to go and try these yourself. Don't just watch this video and assume you know how to do them. Go try them yourself because the more exposure and experience you can get in Excel, the better. If you haven't already, make sure you go download my Excel functions PDF. I will put a link to that down in the description below. Go download it right away so you know everything about Excel that you need to know in order to be a great actuarial candidate. Okay, this is the third video in a four-part series, so next week's video is the last one. It's all about Excel shortcuts and hacks, so you'll definitely want to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video, and I will see you then. Bye for now!